know, on one of my more recent videos, I talked about the negative aspects of topping trees. Now, there's an example of a tree that was topped off. You know, from a distance, it doesn't look too bad, but this is the tree that we're working on today. It's a, a large evergreen ash, uh, Praxinus udii, and it's a very common tree. They turn into absolute giants in our area. But to the untrained eye, you might think that this is a very natural tree that evolved, but the truth is that it was topped really hard down in this area right here a long time ago. So all of this new growth that's coming off of each of these hard cuts is multiplied. So you've got a branch that goes up and then all the branches that sprout off of it that actually increases the hazard level for a couple of reasons. One, there's more weight on the tree. Two, there's more foliage to attract more rain, which in turn can cause more uh, limb failure. And, and three, the biggest problem is, is oftentimes you'll get areas of decay that's set in and the new growth that comes off of the decay will, uh, will cause the failure. So from this perspective, you can see better you know, where the hard cuts were made. You know, there was one there, there was one up here, there was one over here. You see how it, it, it just branches out and each of these branches, these limbs, is now supporting double or even triple the amount of foliage that it would have had it just been left alone. So if you look back at one of my more recent videos, the one that's titled Why Prune, and you read the comments, there are a few people in there that say, well, what happens when the tree is just too big and it's close to the structure and it makes a mess and da 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 da, you know, then it's okay to top them. Well, you know, there, there are exceptions to every rule. And I don't want to come off as an elitist or, you know, so adamant about not uh, hard cutting trees. But if you leave them alone, you oftentimes will most often have a tree that develops naturally that doesn't require near as much maintenance or need to be trimmed as often. But once you start the process, then you create a monster that you have to keep up on. You have to do it so much more. You, you increase your financial liability threefold for the life of the tree. So what we're doing on this individual tree is we're trying to lighten the load on every single part of it and take out enough weight throughout so that we minimize the failures. And there's a lot of dead wood, there's a lot of opening up on the inside that, you know, it could be interpreted as lion's tailing, but it's basically dealing with the structure as it, as it evolved. So we're taking out, you know, enough weight everywhere to hopefully keep this tree safe for another, I don't know, at least another two or three years before it needs to be pruned again. Now to contrast this don't top trees attitude that I have, there are certain circumstances, such as in the uh, one of the past videos I was talking about uh, where a tree was damaged, another tree fell down and half the tree was stripped out. So a lot of people say, well, I'll just cut it down and start over. But I made the recommendation to hard cut what's left. And basically we're topping everything that's left. And, and there was justification, there was a reason for that. Now, the reasoning for that sort of uh, an approach is in this particular situation is twofold. One, it's on a hillside, so they're trying to keep as many of the roots on there as possible for erosion. Uh, two, it'll turn into a big bush. The, the value of it being a tree is lost because it's topped, but now it'll be a big bush of a tree that blocks the view of the neighbor's house. So, you know, you gotta take every situation for what it is, you know. But my point is, don't be the one that starts the problem. If you've got a big, beautiful tree that's growing naturally, don't get in there and top it and butcher it and create long-term expensive problems or shorten the life of the tree. Make good judgments. Really think about what you're doing before you say, oh yeah, that, that tree's too tall or you know, that tree's too dangerous. You have to know the trees. You have to know the, um, 
the inherent weaknesses in the species that you're dealing with, as well as the way that the trees will react to the pruning. So thanks for watching. I uh, hope you're learning something. Rainy day out here in sunny California. <laughs> Sun will come back. It's spring. <laughs>